we've got somebody live in studio. You know her from Boxmac and probably more Junt's cart. She appears on those an awful lot. It's my wife, Nina. We were asked by many to review this this documentary that's going around on the internet right now that uh, is popular about Boogie 2988. I don't think any of us have any history with this guy, but none of us watched him uh, growing up or anything like that. We don't have the AVGN type history. But, I, you know, he was on the periphery. I knew him well enough. Uh, and I heard that there was this documentary that was, like, well-produced. And I said, hey, Nina, it's only 55 minutes. Do you want to watch it with me? And she said, sure, but what is he? Who is he? And I, I, I tried to explain. I said, well, I think he's a morbidly obese, post-bariatric surgery YouTuber from the early days, started in, like, 2006, had some character, like a ranting video game character. Does that sound familiar? I said that was everybody in 2006. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Civilians. Uh, everybody. <laughs> Private citizens. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I, you know, it, 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 he was kind of heralded in the early days as like, they, they would literally call him the Mr. Rogers of YouTube. Like, like he was like an aw shucks type. Like, yeah, I might be, I might be fat and I might be here on YouTube talking about video games, but I just, I hope that love spreads, you know, it's kind of like that type. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, that's, um, I, that's all I know about him. Really? Like I, I knew vaguely of his Francis character. I've never seen it. I just heard people talking about it and they're like, Oh, the guy who did Francis, he's doing these like down to earth videos. And, and I think yeah. I turned one on. He's like, Oh, shucks guys. You know, some game developers, they're not being treated fairly. You do these like, kind of like, yeah, above it all, folksy type, uh, <laughs> you know, videos, and they were very. Uh, I would see them on Reddit all the time, and I think I clicked on one. I'm like, ah, uh, no thanks, <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> uh, can you like shut up? <laughs> can you like shut up? There, there's something seemed un- insincere about it or something, and so I, I just when everyone else was like, oh no, he's like so down to earth and. And yeah. I just didn't, it wasn't for me. Francis is going to morally arbiter. you would be the moral <laughs> arbiter of all YouTube. Um, my name happens to be Francis, my <laughs> legal name. So, and EJ's <laughs> legal name is Boogie. Oh yeah. That's like, it's, well, it's my, uh, it's my confirmation name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Agatha and EJ's Boogie. Um, <laughs> Boogie 2988, actually. He was confirmed into the Catholic church. Um, <laughs> Well, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I actually remember, I remember seeing he appeared on the H3 podcast some years ago, quite like in the early days of that podcast. And I remember he was, um, he was uh, like ever so slightly caught up in culture war stuff. Do you have any memory of that? Uh, I, I don't have any memory. Yeah. I I remember him vaguely being on the show, but I, I don't know. I really don't know anything about him besides like early, uh, 2010s. Some it was he was on Reddit doing the aw shucks thing, and then the the last thing I saw of him was like like on Twitter I saw like screenshots of him pointing a gun, and I'm not really sure what that was all about. <laughs> like that escalated quickly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So going into the documentary, that's all I knew. So I was like, he was he, he's the nicest guy on the planet, and then he's <laughs> waggling a gun outside of his house. <laughs> yes. Um. <laughs> Yeah, he, well, I, I just, I remember briefly, he was, um, I remember he was like at VidCon it's one of those years, and he was on a panel with Anita Sarkeesian about being bullied online. And I remember he was like, he, you know, he was just saying that kind of empty, you know, that empty shit that was like, I think we just need to listen to each other. <laughs> you, know? Um, you know, like unfalsifiable, easy to state things. Um, anyway... As the years went on and as he started to lose subscribers, it it seemed like there was a Reddit mega thread that became popularized. I want to say like four years ago, something like that. And it started to be to uh, be revealed that Boogie was not, in fact, a swell guy. He was kind of like a a compulsive liar presenting somebody who he was not um, uh, flying through sex workers. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Why do I have two beds? One for me and one for my hooker. One for me and one for my hooker. One for me and one for my hooker. One for me and one for the hooker. You know, he he bet everything on crypto, like $750,000 on yeah. crypto. And he oh, lost geez. like 
all of it or something or most of it. Because I threw it into crypto and then lost a shitload of it. You know, and I had seen like there was a, a video by a guy named Christopher Tom that Nina has now also seen. Because once we saw this main documentary, we, you know, she needed some background. Um, that'll kind of give you that. That's an hour. That'll give you some background on like who's basically everything we just described. I mean, you know, with more detail. Um, but this, the, the reason I was compelled to watch was not because I necessarily was obsessed with the guy or certainly I didn't grow up with him is because I noticed that it was actually like a fully produced documentary. It wasn't a simple, um, you know, clip show of somebody just like farming for boogie clips and talking about him over kind of dorky yeah. narration. Like reading tweets. Yeah. He had, yeah, he had yeah. full, he had full access to boogie for like a few months or something. Yeah. This and guy, so Mike, there's a, it's a certain period of boogie's life that he's, he's, uh, He's documenting. Yeah. So he's actually in the guy's house and it, you know, it's, I love it. It was 55 minutes and I was like, man, what a great runtime. Let's just like, let's settle on that runtime for all things from this point forward. Um, Cause like, I see something that's 55 minutes. I'm like, we can watch that. Actually we could, we could sit down. Yeah. We could watch the whole thing. I see something that's even 90 minutes. That's a short movie, but I'm like, yeah, <laughs> Um, that's a, that's a dishwashing session. Yeah. Yeah. You can fly it through 50, 55 minutes. I'm like, we could, if, if Gloria is down at eight 45, I mean, we could be in bed before 10. If we watch something that's 55 minutes. I mean, the, these are, the, <laughs> these are the decisions that need to be made. So yeah, they, the, the guy put some real effort into this thing. I, I always like it when there's like a fully produced piece of content that's on YouTube for free. I, I just, I think that's exciting when it's, you know, you're getting kind of, um, uh, Netflix quality type work on YouTube for free. And um, it focuses on, on several aspects of the guy's life from his new relationship, which we'll talk about to his sex work addiction. But specifically it's about how he's out of money. You know, a guy who went from 4 million subs on YouTube and was bringing in, you know, a, a, a very healthy amount of money to basically no money. Mm. And um, yeah. So why don't we just go through the details here? We've all seen it. All three of us. It, yeah. And the reason I, invited Nina on was just because we we found ourselves talking about it so much that I was like, well, we should just repeat this on the podcast. Yeah. So Boogie like invited this to happen. He's like, come to my house. Exploit me. I mean, it's like a full yeah. invitation to exploit him. Yeah. And he's sharing some of the clips, too. So he's 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 in on it. So, yeah. So I don't know if it was his idea or what, but it also would seem that his his views are up overall ever since doing this. And he's sharing like unedited versions of scenes and that sort of thing. Yeah. It had real leaving Las Vegas vibes. Yeah. But in, but in real life. And he invited this this poor documentarian in. But I guess it worked out if, if both of their views are up. I think it was a yeah. stunt. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a marketing stunt. Yeah. It seems to have worked because it was like, what actually, what other reason would there be for Boogie to be like, let's do this? No, I mean, I would think that that was always his intention, that it was part of his big comeback. Mm -hmm. um, but like the crypto thing, I think it could have failed miserably, but it yeah. sounds like it helped him. He's so. a gambler. Um, yeah. Well, I think what happened was he let, oh, I, just to fill in a blank here, I think w when he was exclusively a YouTuber, his reputation and public image was pretty clean. And when he started streaming, you know, so streaming is always the, the kryptonite. You, you can't spend four to six hours a time with these people. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll find uh, cracks in the armor. <laughs> yeah, the, the mask, the mask will slip because yeah. <laughs> you're sweating playing video games. Yeah. And they're, and, they're, and they're drinking all the Mountain Dew and all the grease from the pizza. Yeah. So the mask is off. just, the mask will start drooping. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I guess like like Boogie on Twitch was a was a much more repulsive person than Boogie on YouTube. Oh, are you trying to manipulate people into giving you money? The answer is yes. Give me some money. And so I think over time he started to deeply regret his decision to let people in on, more onto who he really was, because hiding who he really was was a really successful part of it. Very, very lucrative. Very lucrative. Hmm. And so. It was like, well, either I can try to go back to hiding what I've already revealed or I could like sanction a documentary that shows just how bad it really is and maybe garner some like uh, Interest, uh, sympathy. Fascination. And it's kind of yeah. it's I, I think that decision, that business decision is almost like a, a, a good metaphor for how this guy manipulates 
um, the way he's being received on a moment to moment basis. I here's something I see. I see him like he'll try, he'll try to present himself in a certain deceptive, you know, he'll be kind of deceptive. He'll be like, you know, he'll make himself seem smarter or more together or funnier or more okay with whatever. He'll tell a a little lie with the way he's acting. And then when he, when, when he knows that he's been seen through, he'll lean hard into like the, oh my God, aren't I such a liar to try to like show some self-awareness and kind of like get you back to this place where you can build intrigue. Yeah. Yeah. I think covert narcissism is the right phrase. Like, oh, look at how pathetic I am. You should feel sorry for me. You would never be mean to me because I'm so pathetic, right? Oh, I'm so fat. I'm so weird. I'm so goofy. I'm such an old man. I'm so, I'm such a- I grew up in an abusive family and an abusive home. The amount of pain that's in my head and my heart is- Watching the documentary and seeing the relationship that he ends in, ends up in. I think there's a certain <laughs> type of person that that works on. Oh, yeah. Like other very damaged- sad people. But I think for the most part, I mean, the reason why he just has no viewers anymore must be because everybody sees through him and it's not cute and intriguing. It's just gross and off-putting. Yeah. I think he opened up too much. I think he played that hand for all it was worth. And now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and all that's left is a documentary. <laughs> He's like, maybe, <laughs> maybe I go even harder, you know? Yeah. I think what he, he was trying to do with this or, you know, it's humanize him a little bit. You know, so that, you know, all those those rough edges that he, he's been displaying could be smoothed a little bit. Yeah. Um, Set in yeah. context or but, whatever. But they had no ending. They had no thesis. Like they clearly. No, just... they had an ending. Mushrooms fixed him. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll get there. Um... <laughs> it's crazy to think that something that just grows out of the ground has so much power. And I'm actually holding in my hand right now. But here we go. Ready. The the beginning of the documentary sees him in this sort of this nice marble bathtub, um, in an Arkansas mansion. Yeah, this Mar- uh, Arkansas McMansion. This sort of, I don't know. It looked like maybe ten thousand square feet, something like that. You know, I just found out today, EJ. And I was going to mm-hmm. tell you this too. Is um, you always tell EJ first. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's a we have a joke that. Uh, November 23rd, which is my, not only my dating anniversary, but also my wedding anniversary is <laughs> a third anniversary. It's the day that EJ and I became friends on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I think Facebook reminds Frankie of that first before, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Do you know what day it is? Did you know? It's EJ day. <laughs> it's EJ day. You open your eyes and check your phone. <laughs> it's EJ day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, no, I found out that um, you know the you know the, the, the this was like a tweet that was going around today. You know the old thing where like every day you'll hear a young person be like, uh, uh, "My parents could get a house that you know for half the price, yeah, uh, for three dollars and a lollipop." Hmm. Yeah. Um. Well, as it so happened, the the average square footage of houses has been going up and up and up. Like, and so in effect, they for the for the price, there's like, oh, it, you could get. A house for half the price. They were getting half the house. Yeah. Oh, I mean, our house is 900 square feet, which yeah. is now considered quite tiny. I think the average yeah. house is 2,500 square feet. And everything all over this, uh, all all the replies and stuff were all like, um, you know, you can get it like, hey, you can still get a house that's 1,000 square feet. And I'm like, that's what I live in. And it's been okay. And then, yeah, and the other element to it is like, weren't the families bigger too? So they had half the house and bigger families. And so oh, people yeah. were just squeezing in more. All the kids were sharing rooms, bunk beds galore. It's like the Super Mario family. They're in, like in the Brooklyn apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculing each other over a nice plate of mushrooms. Uh, much like Boogie. Much- <laughs> <laughs> so he's in this stupid castle that he bought with his stupid YouTube money. Just surrounded by toys. like the- yeah. yeah, surrounded by arcade one-ups, that fool. <laughs> I know I was, I'm watching it and, I'm, and he's like, I got so much shit in this house. And I'm like, <laughs> don't look at me, Nina. Don't look at me, Nina. Don't look at me, Nina. <laughs> don't look behind us. <laughs> no, that's, that's not Mortal Kombat. I'm looking at all the shit I need to sell and I'm surrounded by all the shit that I bought for YouTube videos and stuff. And it's hard to not think about what a fuck up I am. And if we were making a documentary about how you had negative money in the bank, I would tell you to sell all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Although I, I don't know. If, I don't think there's resale value. I would tell you to get rid of it because I'd be mad at you. Yeah. 
Yeah, it'd be more of a punishment than anything yeah. else. Yeah. But it's not going to happen because there is no YouTube money. <laughs> <laughs> there is like no downfall if there's no place to fall from. That's, that's right. <laughs> this year is our record year and it was $16,000 and it, that's not paying for a, an Arkansas McMansion. It's um, paying for the lens that I broke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, th there's another thing going around today where Gerard the Completionist um, you All know, there's right. drama YouTube videos being made about the fact that he, uh, his organization failed to get this charity money that they solicited for into the hands of the actual charity. There's no evidence at all that it was intentional or fraud. It, it's probably just incompetence. But I, whenever I see something like this, I'm always like, does YouTube, especially for the young people, the young successful YouTube people, I'm like, does YouTube just make people just too like when they are successful just too flush with money when they have no experience with money they is have it just, no business acumen they've learned nothing as you know they claim themselves they can't adult and yet they're yeah yes. flush with cash so often their brand is like i can't handle money <laughs> give me some to give to a charity yeah. <laughs> and he talks about that frequently he's like i don't know what to do with money i i don't budget so when it comes to financial approach i don't fucking know what i'm doing money comes in Money goes out. For the longest time, my ex-wife handled that shit, but then I got divorced. I don't know where my money is. I don't know what it's doing. He's laying there in the hot in the in the tub, and he's like, oh, "We're still at the tub." Okay. He's like, "I don't even know what money is." I mean, it, <laughs> I bought these rubber ducks for my girlfriend, but I don't know what money. Is. I had this awesome girlfriend. This one time, we were in a tub together, and then we fucked. And it was the best day of my life. Anyway, I've never heard of money before. <laughs> one of my favorite memories with her is us setting in this tub, her playing with rubber ducks as I, I washed her and then I, when we got out, I took her to bed. One of the best nights of my life, Mike. It happened right here. He's like, it comes in, it goes out. And I was like, well, if it's coming in and going out, that's probably okay. <laughs> it's when it's not coming in. It was, but the documentarian who, again, did a really nice job on this and, and he only appears in it briefly, basically to be like, mm. this is very sad and I'm unhappy <laughs> about what I'm making. Everything he says is depressing. Everything he says is like the saddest shit I've ever heard. I don't want my brand new channel to be known as making documentaries about the most depressing people. He uh, he was smart enough to the, the theme, you know, one of the motifs of the documentary is to show you the, the big financial hits that Boogie State, you know, these text descriptions of like, all right, he said he had X number of dollars in the bank. There goes. Then he went out and spent $30 to play D&D. &D. Mm. Yeah. Then he went out yeah. and. And he had to get Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 came out. I had to buy it. Tears of the Kingdom came out. I had to buy it. That's $400 for the video games right there. I needed the sound bar. Yeah. Then I can't return <laughs> it because I'd have to get off my couch to go return it. <laughs> I know I'm budgeting, but I immediately went to Amazon and bought a sound bar for 100 bucks. And then the next day, the TV stopped crackling. And now I have a $100 sound bar that I don't need. It's like, I bought a soundbar because I thought mine was broken, but it turns out it wasn't broken. Now I have a soundbar and I don't want to return it. It, it. That was another thing that struck me. I was like, even with like this, like Arkansas castle with your YouTube money, you still managed to make the place look like a fat grandpa's house. <laughs> <laughs> you still made, you still managed to take all this square footage and turn it into like what my grandpa's living room was in Fall River, like in the 90s. Everything within reaching distance. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. Only missing like that cane with the grab. oh that grabber yeah right yeah um so Mina here the thing that she couldn't she couldn't stop talking about couldn't stop thinking about was and we have some personal experience in our personal lives with with other people we know that are like this she's like he's got to just sell the house right he's got to get out from under this house right that's well they well they were saying like he what whatever his mortgage payment was and that he had a hundred and I think forty thousand or hundred and fifty thousand left on the house. So I was like, okay, the house is clearly worth more than that. Easy solution. Yeah. You yeah. sell the look, house. Look, he sold two magic cards. Give the guy a break. And and, and was told that a bunch of the other ones were worthless. <laughs> he was like, Oh man, the magic card thing was what I was counting on. This month I need from you about a thousand dollars to make mortgage. I could do two hundred a piece on those. Dude, I thought we were looking more like 400, 450 on each of these. 175 is what it's down to. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Those Good took, Lord, that tank. took a beating. I guess what you come to see over and over again is there's no, well, if I was in that situation, I would just because yeah. he doesn't think like you and he can't do what you would do. No, 
what how I, we got into that situation. Here, here's what I've learned about the poor guy. Um, and and that, that's the thing too. It, like, it feels like a lot of people, he's kind of a lol cow. People are like laughing at him and stuff. And, and, and it, look, there's a lot of reason to be disappointed in him. Um, but I think, I think what's going on from the, the lying to the narcissism to the manipulation and all that. I don't think he's just like some like evil cackling crazy person. No. I think that he is physically deeply uncomfortable. I think he's mentally unwell, but first and foremost, I think he's physically very uncomfortable. And again, I know people um, who will do, who will manipulate their surroundings and whatever else they kind of have to like manipulate to make themselves more physically comfortable. And sometimes that's in the form of like getting somebody to get off your ass, like leave me alone. Sometimes it's like to just get them to deescalate by being like, you're totally right. I'm too fat. Just to mm. kind of shut them up. Sometimes it's, um, you know, what like designing a space where you don't have to get up, but it, it all, it all starts and ends with the fact that he has no vision for his life. He has no purpose and vision for his life from this point forward, which is kind of a paradox because he had a meaningful life as a e-celebrity. And that's mm. kind of fallen off a cliff. It's views at any cost. If you haven't noticed it's views mm, at the cost fair. of his own dignity, it's views at it. And so the only, it, the reason is not to build something meaningful. The reason is to make sure that there's money coming in because he doesn't know when he's going to die. And he's resigned himself to the fact that he's going to die a very early death. Do I think I'll make 50? Yeah, probably. That's only two years away. Do I think I'll make 60, which is 12 years away? Probably not. And he can't do anything mm. else. They showed that when he went to the agency that was supposed <laughs> to help him get a job. Yeah. He went in there for the purposes of embarrassing himself and wasting this woman's time, basically. Yeah. It was like, well, look, I'm a felon. I'm disabled and morbidly obese and I have no skills and I've never worked before. And yeah, could you try to place me in a job, you know? Uh, I mean, he like mentioned to, to his career in porn or something or <laughs> doing. Oh, yeah. Uh, he used to work in porn. Porn business. Yeah. I wonder what he's that like. She's like, you maybe you shouldn't have uh, mentioned that <laughs> in the job. <laughs> and he was like, well, it depends on the job. Maybe they'll be <laughs> excited about that. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> this, this could be a plus. I did work in the porn industry for the better part of seven years. So, oh, I mean, be real with me. Do you really think it would be a good idea to go to a real interview and reference porn? It depended on the job, I would think, like at a strip club, maybe. It's not unlike when a drug addict comes into money. It's only a bad thing when a drug addict comes into money. Mm -hmm. um, like, would Boogie live a better life had this whole e-celebrity thing not happened? If would, he, he, would he have had to develop relevant, like, tech skills and yeah. work a regular job and then go play D&D &D on Friday nights with his friends? Right. And maybe they would split the pizza cost <laughs> and he wouldn't be spending <laughs> 150 bucks a week on pizza. Yeah. I don't know why. Like, of all the things that happened in this documentary, including, like, he goes on this big monologue about how he feels as though he d he deserves to be able to have sex with an LA 10 instead of an Arkansas 8 all this nasty stuff the women i dated were pretty sure but they were like Arkansas 8s <laughs> not LA 10s with sugaring i got to fuck some LA 10s and i think that's cool mm. there's a there's a very strange interview with an anonymous hooker Who's like, like, I quit sex work because, because I, of him. I couldn't now, find his penis. And now I'm married and have kids. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boogie saved my life. <laughs> Boogie saved my life. And Bo Boogie is like uh, rubber stamping this edit. <laughs> <laughs> like when I saw, when I finally found his micro penis under eight meat curtains, I knew <laughs> that I needed a family. <laughs> 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 this is so terrible. terrible. I'm not even really exaggerating. She basically said that. Yeah. No, she did say yeah. that. I don't mean to fat shame or anything, but there is rules upon rules upon rules, and it took me a lot of time to find a stick. I am now married with two kids, and sleeping with Boogie is one of the reasons I quit sex work. Oh, yeah. He's, he's on a million pills. Initially, he lost something like 200 pounds. I think he went from something like 550 down to something like 350 after the surgery. I, 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 who knows what he weighs, but my guess would be 400. It looked like 400 mm. to me. Yeah. I know 400 when I see it. I, I, I know 500. I know 400. I have a, I have a pretty good sense for these things. You go to carnivals and guess the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, back to Nina's point about the pizzas. Um, they yeah, have like a come to Jesus moment with his friends of like, I can't keep buying you pizza. <laughs> come to pizzas. I normally spend like a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars every Saturday to like feed us. And 
like I showed them my bank books today and I'm not like, I've never wanted to burden you guys with this, but like, I'm at a point where saving $300 a month would be useful. For some reason, like of all the things that happened in this documentary, from hookers to shrooms, this this particular scene where he plays like Magic the Gathering or 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 D D or whatever, whatever tabletop he was playing has stuck with me. Cause hmm. he's talking to these other kind of, you know, these what appeared to me to be lost souls. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're Magic the Gathering people. I, I went to engineering school and there was a, a group that did this. And uh, well, let me just say the Boogie documentary is very representative of that kind yeah. of group. I would also like to see a follow up documentary on that one female in the group. Yeah. On the one woman. Oh, well, that, that, that is actually something that happens. I, I remember yeah. on campus, there was always that one chick who's with the guys. So, no. Yeah. He's at this thing and uh, uh, he's like, guys. I just got to level with you. I know that I always bring all the food and snacks and it's just something I, I don't think I'm going to be able to keep spending, you know, $200 a Friday on this. And then and I his sweet, compassionate friend. Yeah. This one guy with kind of like, you know, like a voice right in his throat. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, uh, I mean, we like the pizzas and the M&Ms and the candy and the sodas. <laughs> But, you know, we, we've always told you, you do not have to bring all the full calorie sodas to this. <laughs> surge in orbit. So we've been telling you for years that we don't care about the food that much. Okay. Yeah. Like, don't, like, don't get me wrong. I like having snacks and soda when I'm over here because I don't eat those at my house. Right. I feel like there was like a, the, the purpose of just that whole interaction. It's like, look how like thought thoughtlessly generous <laughs> you don't have to buy candies you haven't dated in in a while you haven't dated in a while i mean yeah a while I'll, that's fair enough yeah i made a, an effort um some effort in high school to play dnd <laughs> it seemed like the place to be <laughs> you gave it a college try yeah <laughs> yeah a high school try <laughs> um, like, i belong here yeah, well, you know, I was into Lord of the Rings and I was hanging out with nerds and they were playing and I was like, okay, what do you do? You write a story, you draw a picture. That seems yeah, you were excited to build your character. Yeah, a dwarf. Um, and uh, it didn't really pan out that way. I didn't really love it. But I went to this one kid's house. He was a, a large kid and he was kind of like a social, you know, he was socially isolated mm -hmm. and he had a brother that was the same way. And um, he, his legal guardian was his grandma, I think. Yeah. And, um, I remember like, you know, it, it seemed as though he didn't always have friends over the house and there was a D and D group of us that went over to the house hmm. and this grandma EJ, treated it like a birthday party. She fed us like Kings. Um, <laughs> she, well, I, I believe there was a, there was an actual chocolate fondue fountain. There was a, wow. uh, at the ring of the chocolate fondue fountain was like a bed of M&Ms. Um, there were co ice cold sodas. And then I thought I was like, I'm stuffed on junk. And then like at, <laughs> at 11 AM or something like in comes like 18 pepperoni pizzas. The way it was described no. to me was like one of those Instagram <laughs> charcuterie counters. of just <laughs> like debauchery and sugar. Yeah. And, and I remember she, I remember she would say so. She's like, I don't know why my kids are so fat and hyper. So hyper. <laughs> <laughs> we used to say, I always say that in high school. I don't know why they're so fat and hyper. <laughs> I, anyway. I do. Come to the foyer and pick up the Skittles topping pizza. After Boogie says, no, there's no way I can get a real job. The documentary takes a three month break. They check back in with him and he's like, well, it's not all bad. And he introduces this, this meek little thing, this 20 year old woman. Nina, the first words out of Nina's mouth are she, she said two things. She goes, can we not also ruin this woman's life? <laughs> <laughs> it was the first thing that came out of her mouth. The second thing was, I wonder if they're going to go into her trauma history because no. it, it's reasonable to assume that there's a trauma history here, probably. Um, and the movie didn't go into it to its credit actually but then he posted an unedited clip of her interview of and it goes did. into the whole thing about like well dad wasn't there it all it's always like dad wasn't there you know yeah. i lived on a farm i just don't want to be alone um a whole thing about how um he could cheat on her he, she wouldn't leave him 
you know, I'd be sad. We'd talk about it, but uh, no, nothing will cause me to leave this guy. I mean, she's like deep, she's super into mm. this guy. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that, that whole section made me, um, uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, cause she, they, they got all this B roll of her like doing his hedges and, um, uh, yeah. you know, vacuuming and yeah. Doing yeah, all these like weird yeah m- mother chores for him. And- <laughs> no, her her naked on top of him in the tub was the very worst shot in the entire. Oh, and actually, yeah. you know, I think that is when you said like, okay, like we don't have to like. Yes, yeah. Cause I, cause I was like, <laughs> do we have to show her in this light? Do we have to put her nudity in this documentary? She's, you know, a twenty year old girl who's going to regret this. And the thing that that became very obvious to me, and it was even it's in the trailer to the movie, is she he is um emphasizing to her how likely it is he'll die at any moment he's like hmm. do you understand my risk of stroke yeah. do you understand let my- me pull up my primary care portal and read you my <laughs> yeah. last i mean my biggest fear is dying on her if i die in the next two or three years on her that's just going to ruin her life but this is my health summary this is everything that's currently wrong with me my risk for stroke or heart attack is astronomical. I am essentially a walking time bomb. And she's sobbing and weeping. And he's like, yeah, I know, huh? So gonna die. It, 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 you must be so sad for me. You must really love me to cry this much. I was about like, it. God damn. Like this dude really wants to lean into this whole, like he, I think he kind of likes the ego stroke of like, you'd be so sad if I died. <laughs> I'll never be ready for it, but I know. <laughs> yeah, it's and it, it, again it, part of the uh, kind of like that. Yeah, getting trying to get sympathy for all yeah. these things, and, and it's credible. It's likely that he'll die. Like he he could. He's not a liar. He just enjoys the truth too much. That's right. Yeah. Well, said. and also like I didn't really appreciate that they would like this documentary person would always like zoom in on his like foot. Like his <laughs> naked foot next to like a croc. <laughs> I thought that croc was going to melt in the fire. I watched the crocs the whole time he was doing shrooms. Oh, you're I, I, I'll be honest. I didn't notice any crocs. Sounds like you guys were. <laughs> <He did. laughs> um, see, was anybody else at home focused on the crocs? Was I? Is, I don't know. A naked foot next to a croc is disgusting. <laughs> yeah. So they, they go to like a stand up comedy show together where, where this comedian ridicules them and they've got this real the the couple here boogie and this and this woman they they really get off on like fuck them right just you and me they got this like bonnie and clyde natural born killers Mm -hmm. energy yeah 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 but much fatter bonnie and clyde meets leaving las vegas i mean that was it that was the documentary there's nowhere to go (laughs) he's saying it's 55 minutes go check it out because he's like 29 years older than her you're right. Oh, yeah, we should mention that. He's 49, she's 20. Yeah. But she's, she's an adult. She's 20. She, that, you know, it's never good when you say, well, she's an adult. Is, he, is this a sex trafficking situation? They opened the documentary with him talking about that previous girlfriend who he described as childlike and liked the rubber ducks, and he was, like, taking a bath with her. There was one girl that I dated. She liked a lot of childish things. She liked rubber ducks. That's why I have some of these rubber ducks. Yeah, and there was some clip of him on th- that H3 podcast where he was dating somebody who was something like 18. And, and Ethan was like, you dog. Like, you you know, you're with young women. How old is she? <laughs> How old is she? What's the age? <laughs> she will be able to legally drink soon. Uh, Damn, you dog, dude. Yeah, it was bad, man. It's not bad. She's illegal. You're out there. You're yeah, shaking your dick. So that brings us to the psychedelics. So... You know, here he is with a mountain of of kind of mentally dysfunctional things about him, a mountain of issues that if he wants to live to see tomorrow, if he wants to have a life worth living, he's got to he's got to do some serious mental work. He's got to really take it, his life seriously. He's got to meet his maker. But instead, he says, you know, I heard something about your brain will just kind of snap into place if you take some shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Psychedelics can help reset certain brains. Well, that's the, the kind of the theme of him is like quick fixes, right? It's yeah. The, it's not doing any of the work. It's getting the uh, stomach stapled. It's doing right. this. It's doing all these quick things. You know, oh, maybe I can get 
rich off crypto. Maybe I can do. Yeah, it's it's all the like stuff, impulsive, easy, quote unquote, easy fixes. It seems like he's into. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great insight. He he definitely. he Yeah. And, you know, some of his life, like becoming an e-celeb overnight and being able to live off of it for 20 years is kind of like a quick fix. I mean, it's a way out. Given how quickly he took to the idea and his history of substance use and sex workers and do we really believe that this was the first time ever that he did this or was it just like we don't have an ending for this let's go <laughs> there's no way this is the first time he's been on psychedelics yeah a guy like that it's one of the only things i haven't tried yet so let's give it a shot but he goes to see a shaman out in the woods to go face his problems you know the the reasonable way um, <laughs> the shaman asks a few penetrating questions during the, shru- during the, the trip. He's like, but why boogie <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> when did you feel the need of this separate personality? Is that what, was that like what you used as a coping mechanism to socialize with? Oh, well, that's exactly what it is. The revelation he has is like, why do I care? You know? <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like that <laughs> low resolution. It's really stupid. <laughs> what the hell, man? It's all kind of bullshit. It's, all, bullshit? it's all bullshit. What? 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 Just all the things I've been worried about. <laughs> because you are the master of your own orchestra. And then the documentarian, of course, is smart enough to be like, nothing changed for Boogie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was really like the end of every hoarder's an intervention episode where it's like they're still exactly where they were. That's the real reason we brought you on. Nina loves hoarders. Uh, the, no, uh, you. Not the individuals, but the show. <laughs> I, don't mean, I, I feel for the individuals. But. <laughs> she loves these guys. She, she spends her weekends with them. Uh, I'm no, something of a hoarder myself. Do you ever watch that show? Have you ever seen that show before, Hoarders? I haven't seen it. I, I know of it and I've seen like clips of it. But. The one that will always stick with me is the guy who, because it's one thing to hoard old newspapers, milk, disgusting food. Arcade one ups, uh, it, <laughs> you know that, that that's one thing. Uh, another is to hoard rats, and <laughs> the 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 guy he had a million rats in his house. They were in the in the sheetrock, EJ. Um, no. They were under the no. floorboards. You they, don't know, you know, they, they were had, dying. Like, eaten underneath his bathtub, like they were living underneath. No, the yeah, tub. Just uh, every inch was a rat, and and. You see a thing like that. It's like any other, I think, mental condition where you're like, so what's with the rats? What's really <laughs> going on here? And this poor guy, he, his family died in a car. The whole lot of them died in a car crash. And he drove by it on the way home from work. I think he was a first responder. Or he's a, something he, he like that. He was like an EMT and showed up to the car accident. To his whole family dead. Children, the wife, everything. And... In, isn't the human brain fascinating? <laughs> He's like, I, I, you know. So he I, got a rat. He got a pet. Yeah. And then. And then it just ample. It turned into billions of rats. And the, and in the show. And he's he was like a happy-go-lucky guy. It was as though he was living in a stupor where he didn't have mm. really a clue how many rats he had. Or, or he was very comfortable with the number of rats he had. And then some, you know, whatever, like the psychiatrist. Somebody brings up like, you know, does does that have anything to do with the family? And he broke it. He went from this dopey demeanor to he broke down it to tears. He was like an hysterical mess. <laughs> How much? I mean, you're, you found your wife. That's, that's pretty darn tough. Yeah. It was this thing that was under the surface that he's hiding all the time and somehow hoarding rats in the sheetrock masks it. is like what is going on with the human brain sometimes man mm. um but boogie yeah. th- isn't in any uh tragedy quite like that or any trauma qu- although he, he he was abused as a child the documentary doesn't go into that but apparently he faced very serious abuse as a child like, i believe sexual molestation and I think, yeah, violence i think because he they do pretty much directly reference you know physical abuse from his father who was an alcoholic and i think they do mention at least that his sister was sexually abused by the father i am a fatally flawed broken person you know i'm not that different from my mom i'm not that different from my dad i've never molested anybody you know i didn't beat my kids i chose not to have kids so i wouldn't do those things so he's got you know he's got stuff going on and and mushrooms aren't going to fix it the question is this um and it does look like his views are picking back up maybe he'll he'll have a second act or a third act or something but the question is 
can this person at this stage of a sad life, what, what, a, how much of it is reversible? Can he lose some weight? Can he take his own life a little bit more seriously? Like, is, is there a chance for him at this stage? And like, you want to believe like, yeah, I think a lot of this is still reversible. Yeah. I want to believe the mushrooms fixed him. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever felt happiness. I wait, 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 what? Happiness. <laughs> I mean, each individual problem is completely solvable. Selling the house. Yeah. And making his finances better. Losing weight. Maybe not dating 20 year olds. Who have their own trauma histories. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he won't. He doesn't want to change. He just wants to get views, like you said, no matter how. But And the reason is for money. And the reason for the money is so he can remain comfortable. And not do anything hmm. different. He really just wants to tickle his pleasure, pleasure sensors. That's what the yeah. prostitutes are about and everything. It's it's all just to kind of keep himself in this like dopamine state yeah. until he... The quick, the quick fixes. I mean, if I were to have like a criticism of it, I wish it would. Because like, like I said, I went into it because you guys were watching it. And uh, I, I wanted to make sure I was educated on this phenomenon. And I, I, I felt like... I felt like I um, needed more context about who he was in that documentary, mm. even if it was quickly. Yeah, I pieced it together as the because they reference it as you go along. But I wish it was kind of more front loaded, like, oh, this is Boogie. This is who he is. This is what, something maybe artfully do it. But I would do that up front and then then go into this, which is basically like a snapshot of whatever this three months of his life or whatever. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was well done. It was, uh, you know, I was entertained. So it's, it's definitely different for YouTube because usually, yeah, it's just content clip farming and, right. uh, with, with pensive narration over it. And it wasn't that. So it was interesting to hear the guy, the documentarians reflections on, oh, this is a new channel for me. I don't want it to just be a bunch of documentaries about, sad depressing people his goal is to make more documentaries of this nature i think yeah i i'll subscribe and check him out in the future it's it, it, i i'm excited by the idea of like new event youtube um creators yeah I think that's really cool yeah it's just like anything that's like this high effort is is something to be applauded and yeah it's exciting and uh yeah even if it was a marketing tool boogie could use but <laughs> i have no clue where the fuck i am or even who i am I don't give a fuck. Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week. Like, don't get me wrong. I like having snacks and soda when I'm over here because I don't eat those at my house.